Hello um, and welcome, thanks for dropping by. Today I'm starting a new project um, against my better judgment. I should be finishing other projects, but my best friend looked at me and said, can you knit me a balaclava? And I made her one last year that was super chunky, um, but she's looking for more of a transitional piece. And I said, yes, of course, because I'm trying to get rid of all my scrap yarn and she said she didn't care what color it was. So today we are making a balaclava knit um, and I'm going to be doing it yellow with white striping I think. I don't know why, I just have these. And there are the Karen Simply Soft and they're like a little shiny which usually isn't my style but I have them, I bought them for something else, never use them, they need to be used. I'm using these circular needles. And I don't know what size they are, they're very small, but they're the only ones I have that are like a reasonable length. I don't know why, well I guess I do know why, it's because I buy things without educating myself, but all of my circular needles are like 24 inches long. Um, so I have these ones which are pretty short. And to get started, I'm just going to do a long tail cast on. If you have never knit before, do not fear. Uh, I'm going to put all of my favorite like very basic tutorials in the description below and they are all very short i don't do like i don't i personally don't watch long lengthy basics tutorials so if you're looking for a quick little what the heck is casting on video i will have that in the description below other than that i don't even have a number in mind i think i'm going to cast on about 100 stitches this to me is like the <laughs> This looks ridiculous, but I think I want it to be almost the exact length of my needles at the base so that it like drapes a little bit but isn't too big and is not too small. So I'm going to cast on until my needles are full and my guess is that that's going to be 100 stitches, but I will let you know exactly how many when we, when I finish casting on and I check in with you. Yeah, let's just freaking jump into it. Let's make this. I think it'll be a quick little work up and that's literally all I have to say. So I'm gonna cast it on. I have gone like a, a comfortable full hook, not hook, a comfortable full round circular needle. It's like comfortably spaced and whatnot, whatever. So this is 120 stitches. So I've cast it on 120. And I want it to be ribbed, but not a close rib. So I'm gonna do two by two ribbing. I think that's what they call it. I'm like very new to knitting guys, but whatever. So I'm gonna do two knits and two purls um, to get knitting, like a ribbing that looks like this. That's the goal. I'm gonna connect it in the round um, and just go around for like three inches of a base. But let me show you what I'm talking about with the ribbing like that. First things first, you want to make sure that all of your stitches are facing the same way. You don't want a twist in there. I know it looks kind of twisted, but that's because the cable keeps moving, but I promise it's not. I made sure it is not. And so we are looking at it like this. Peep my cute little stoppers. I got them on Etsy. So now that I have it like this, I want to be knitting in the round for this part. So I'm going to take my little stoppers off aggressively okay and then one of these is my tail from my long tail cast on that was just too long so I'm actually gonna snip it so I don't get confused so now we're like this I'm gonna have it a little closer and I'm just going to connect it by doing a stockinette stitch so I'm putting it through that first loop like so and then I'm taking my working yarn, which is this one, of course. No, not that one, which is this one, of course. Wrapping it around and pulling it through like so. And I'm gonna do that twice. So this is the second stockinette stitch. And I have a tendency to cast on really tight. So my first round of stitches is really tight. And then after that, it gets normal. So then from here, I'm going to pull it to the front like that so I can purl to. 
So purling, I'm going to put it in through the front and push it backwards. It's the reverse of knitting. So purl two. And then put it back in the front and knit two. So I'm going to do one round all the way around and then I'll come show you what it looks like. Okay, so I lied. I was going to do just one row and show you guys, but one row is kind of useless when you're ribbing. So I did a few rows, three to be exact. You can see the ribbing here. So I have two stitches of stockinette and then two stitches of purling. And it's just like a little wider. It's not like a functional rib. It's more like a style choice for a ribbing. Um, and this is all I'm gonna keep doing over and over and over until I have like, I think I said six inches before, but like maybe four, four and a half inches. I don't really know yet. Yeah, so I'm gonna keep doing that. And by the time I catch up with you guys, it'll probably be like tomorrow. Um, but I just wanted to show you what the ribbing looks like. So again, this is two knit and two purl on repeat in the round. We're making progress. Okay, I'm excited for this little update. It is the next day and also I'm a little overdressed. I don't know if you noticed because I'm going to the ballet today and I only get ready once a day that is my policy so this is what i look like when i'm all dressed up in case you were wondering but we're here to talk about the balaclava so hold on i'm actually very excited because this is working up so nicely and also because i finally learned how to rib continental style and that changed everything for me um so this is the ribbing so far and i did want to show you something a little bit ridiculous so I can, in fact, put this on my head. When I put this on, it's actually pretty big, which is fine at the bottom because you kind of want your balaclava to be able to fan out and like cover area. However, as I'm approaching my chin, which is where I'm gonna start, um, which is where I'm gonna stop ribbing and start just doing the stockinette stitch. As I approach that area, I think I wanna make it a little smaller. So let me show you my hands on it. Um, what I'm going to do is just divide out um, the stitches by four, and then whatever that number is, that's where I'm gonna decrease, and I'm gonna decrease four points around until I put it on my head and it feels a little closer to my face because if it's too big it's just not going to stay on properly and it is a little too big so i'm thinking probably two rows of decreasing but let me show you what i'm talking about with the stitch markers i really hope this makes sense but my face when i measured it is about 23 inches around and when i hold up this and it is stretched out you can see that I have quite a bit of slack there, which again, isn't a problem at the bottom because I actually kind of want that. However, there is about, there's about three inches that I can afford to take off so that it better fits my face. And so what I'm going to do to do that is take some stitch markers and you don't have to have these fancy ones just you could use yarn or like a little tiny rubber band or whatever you use as a stitch marker i'm gonna find my teensiest tiniest ones so let me grab those okay so here she is looking gorgeous by the way this is one of those yarns that i really don't like for crochet but i am loving knit it's like so cozy and beautiful, but let's start decreasing. I just finished my last two pearls of the ribbing, and I can tell because this is my little original tail. So now I'm gonna put on my pink little stitch marker so that I remember the pink is the first one. Okay, and then I'm gonna stop ribbing here. I'm only gonna do stockinette 
So only knit from here on out. And I'm going to start by decreasing. And I need to decrease every 30 stitches. So I'm just going to do a like a pick up two style decrease. So I'm picking up two, wrapping it around. And now it is just one stitch like so. And now, so that's one, two, three. I'm going to go all the way to 30. And now I'm going to put a little stitch marker on. Beautiful. And decrease again. So I like cannot decrease continental. I don't know why. But I'm just going to pick up two loops on my hook. Not my hook. Man, can you tell I usually crochet? <laughs> on my needles and just decrease just like that. So I'm gonna do that two more times because I have two more stitch markers and that way it's even all the way around and then I will show you guys when I'm done with this row what we're working with. <laughs> I have finished one round. You can see here that I have my little pink stitch marker. So that is one round of decreasing and I'm not really positive the best way to make sure I'm decreasing enough. Um, but I'm gonna do, I think, four rounds where I, no. I'm gonna do two rounds where I decrease now at the stitch markers um, and see how that looks and feels. And then we'll go from there. Um, that's about it though. So I'm gonna keep decreasing at the stitch markers for a few more rounds and then try to get an accurate measurement. I always have a hard time getting an accurate measurement when it's on the needles. It's not like crochet where you can just constantly hold up the piece because it's on these needles. But um, I'm gonna do two rounds and hope for the best. And yeah, I guess we'll see. I have done three decreasing rows and I'm gonna kind of walk you through my thought process so when I measured out the bottom and I took that chunk and I was basically like this it's this much too big I just kind of went through and did my best to count the stitches in this chunk and I'm pretty sure it's 12 <laughs> I have a hard time telling when it's knit purling but obviously it's two and two so I estimated it's about 12 stitches too big so if I'm taking away four stitches each round then three rounds 12 stitches are you picking up what I'm putting down awesome great so I have decreased 12 stitches and now I'm going to just keep going in the round but the stockinette stitch so just knit no purl because when you're in the round it gives you that classic knitted look without having to purl which we love we we stand um so i am just going to continue that until it reaches like chin level because that's where you want the face cut out to be because i know my friend and this is definitely as much of a fashion statement as it is she wants it to be warm so maybe about here, just a few rows because I'm also going to add a border at the end all the way around. I'm, I'm like looking at my reflection in, the, in my phone. Um, so I will let you know exactly how many rows, but I'm thinking right below the chin is where I'm going to stop because I do want to make sure that that one inch border wouldn't then cover her mouth. Are you guys seeing my vision? I hope you guys can see my vision, but I am done with the increasing, decre the, the decre the, I'm done with the decreasing. I'm gonna take out these stitch markers and I'm gonna keep note of how many rows that I have done so far. Obviously it's three. Um, and I will just let you guys know how we end up, right? Yeah, I think we're really close. Just a few rows, I think. And then we will start the face hole. 
face hole. I just went past my pink little stitch marker again. And now I need to make the face hole. And I'm going to do that by casting off. I don't know how to go back after casting off. I don't think you can. So scary as it is, though, this is what we are doing. So I'm going to take my little holders off. Here we go, we're gonna cast off. So we're gonna start by stitching one, stitching two, and then pulling this one, oh my God, pulling this one over this one and letting it drop and then doing another stitch and repeating pulling this one now over this one and letting it drop so i've cast it off two and i'm going to keep going until i have cast it off for 30 that's three eight stitches and i'm gonna do that off camera because if you can't tell my hands are shaking because i'm panicking uh i tend to make a lot of mistakes when i'm recording at the same time so i will check in with you guys after i've cast it off 38 stitches so i would say this is like kind of the halfway point because there's only two things left to do create the whole like the back of the hood part of the balaclava and then to decrease at the top um all that's kind of step one or like you know of the second half and then to add the ribbing around the face so those are the only two things left to do so i have casted it off this amount stunning fashion um and now all i'm gonna do is go from this end to this end back and forth so we're no longer working in the round um and i'm just gonna do that for like almost until this part of the head like where your head starts to curve back forward it's so weird to talk about a head that way um, but the back curve of your head and this is also where i want to start my striping so i'm going to take my white and add that in and that's going to be my next row and then if we add the three rows where I was decreasing plus the two rows where I was just adding a little bit of length so that is five obviously so I'm gonna do five rows of white and just go back and forth nothing crazy of just knitting purling knitting purling back and forth but with the new color. I'm gonna show you a little bit of me switching the color and then next time you see me, we will start decreasing at the top. But let me show you the color switch and then we'll go from there. I'm gonna take my new color, which I'm doing white and I'm pulling from the middle, which is always risky. <laughs> and I am going to tie it on and this all gets cleaned up kind of at the end so then here I'm gonna keep knitting but instead of taking the yellow I'm gonna take my working white yarn over pull through and then I do have to cast off one more just like that and then I'm going to continue knitting across, now all in white. And again, I'm just going to do this for five rows, switch back to yellow, five rows, back to white, five rows. Um, that's going to be my stripe pattern. And then I'll meet you almost to the top, um, but it's probably going to be tomorrow, so you won't be able to see my glamour look anymore. Um, but yeah, I will see you guys tomorrow. But for you it is right now okay it is the next day and I have to say this is like 
by far my favorite thing I've knitted ever and I know that the bar is low because I've only knitted like three things but this has works up so quickly and it's so cute because everything's very simple and easy to make look nice if you like are focusing and also when I say quickly I know it seems like it's been three days but I've only spent like two hours <laughs> each day on it because my attention span is just so short. So this is where we're at. I have done 30 rows, three zero. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. And now I want to start decreasing to form that like head shape and then seam at the top. So to do that, we're gonna decrease in the middle for like 11 or so rows. And I'm about to show you what I'm talking about and then we cast off and seam, and then we're ready for the face frame. I think this is gonna be done today. So let me show you what I mean by decreasing in the middle, and then we'll move on from there. Okay, so I'm now ready to go across with yellow on my knit side here, but I want to start decreasing in the middle um, so that it starts to curve nicely and turn into the top of the hat part of it. So right here, I have 69 stitches. So first things first, I want to identify the middle stitch. So I'm gonna go ahead and count until I reach that middle stitch. So since I have an odd number of stitches, it's 69. This stitch, 35 exactly, is the middle. So then it's gonna be 34, one stitch, and 34. And that works out for me just fine and if you have an even number that's fine as well so you want to take the middle three stitches so if this is my middle then I'm gonna add this one and this one these three and then I'm gonna take my stitch marker which I placed on there because I couldn't count earlier <laughs> I kept losing count and I'm gonna place I cut these in half by the way so that I could move them but if you're using a string or whatever it's gonna be perfectly fine and I'm gonna put one before the three stitches and I'm gonna put one after the three stitches like this. Beautiful. So now I'm going to knit across and when I get here, I'm going to knit all three of these stitches together. So I'm gonna knit across and then I'll show you what I mean. I have knitted across in my yellow and now I'm at my first stitch marker. So I'm just gonna move that over. Oh, okay, I'm gonna move that over. And then I'm on a knit side. So all I'm gonna do is pick up the three stitches all at once. So I'm picking up all three stitches. I'm going to yarn over and pull them all off into one yellow stitch. Just like that, pull it nice and tight. Then I'm gonna move my other stitch marker over and I'm just going to continue down like normal. Okay, so I'm gonna continue down the row like normal and then I'm gonna move each stitch marker over one so that I have three groups in the middle again. And then on the reverse side, I'm going to purl them all together. And then I'm going to repeat that process back and forth for like 11-ish rows. That's where I'm starting, um, or like 10 rows. And I, I keep saying 11 because I'm trying to like do the mental math. Um, but I'm going to do 10 rows of that pattern where the middle three, I'm either knitting together or I'm purling them together to decrease in the middle. And then after 10 rows, I'm going to do 10 rows. I like even numbers. So after 10 rows, I'm going to show you guys what it looks like and just do a little check-in and see what's next. Okay, guys. So this is the current state of the balaclava. And honestly, it is looking gorgina. It's looking stunning. Um, this yellow is like such a pretty yellow. 10 out of 10 would recommend. But here I am at the top and I have done five... 10 rows of that decreasing the middle three stitches together so i've done 10 rows of that and now what's going to happen is i am going to cast off 
all of these stitches and then up here at the top I'm gonna seam it together so let me put you guys on the little tripod and let's do that Okay, I always get so nervous after casting off. Um, I think that's like the third time I've said that in this video, but do you ever get over that feeling? Because I have a feeling I will not. I think it will always make me nervous. But here I am tying my final little knot. And here she is. I'm even nervous to try it on. I feel like it looks a little short. But we'll see. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. So now I am going to take a darning needle and tuck in all of these strings because I don't, I did not carry. I could have like carried the yarn up, but for some reason I didn't want to do that. So I am going to weave in all of these and I am going to seam up the top on the inside of course so let's do that and then it's just time to fame frame frame the face we'll do the little face frame yes okay <laughs> Okay, so now we are literally like 90% done with it. It is looking so cute. I'm very excited. We just have to add a little border around the face and then we are done. So I want the border to close it up a little bit, but not too much. So I am going to skip a stitch as we add the border, but let's go and show you what I mean by that. Here is the face hole, of course. And I'm going to start my stitches in the corner um, just because, I don't know, I'm so weird about how I decide those things. And then I'm gonna grab my yarn and make a slip knot like that. So now with my working yarn, I'm gonna go around and I'm gonna pick up three stitches and then I'm gonna skip a stitch, so. I'm gonna go and insert my hook, my hook. I keep calling it a hook, man. My needle here. And then I'm going to yarn over and pull up a loop like that. And then I'm gonna repeat, yarn over, pull up a loop to three, just like that. And then I'm going to skip one stitch and go into the next stitch and pick up three more. And then I'm gonna skip and repeat. Hey guys, it's me from editing. I just wanna be totally transparent. In that clip, I showed me picking up the stitches from like the inside out and I wanted to let you know that I undid that and picked up the stitches from the front putting my needle in that way this those stitches that you like are attaching to 
then go to the inside. Whereas if you do it the way that I showed in the video, it those stitches get pushed to the outside. So I just wanted to be transparent with you guys because I did not film a little PSA that when you are going around picking up your stitches, you wanna put your needle in from the nice side to the wrong side and pick your stitches up pulling out. I hope that makes sense, sorry. And I'm just going to repeat that process all the way around the hood and then I'm just going to rib the same exact pattern that I ribbed on the bottom, which is two knit, two purl for just a few rows until I feel like, you know, maybe like a half inch of a border. And then that's literally it. So I'm going to keep picking these up and then I'm going to start my ribbing. And then we're done. I'm so excited. I actually am really obsessed with how it came out and I kind of want to make like 10 more, but let's finish this one first. One week later. Okay, hey guys, so it is like two days later. I finished this in that last clip that you saw, but I totally didn't wrap anything up and then I left for the weekend. So long story short, um, I have finished it. It is looking so cute. And I just wanted to give two little notes. One, when you're casting off in a two by two ribbing, just make sure that you are still purling on the purl stitches. So when you knit and then pull the loop over to cast off, just purl, pull the loop over to cast off. And that way everything looks consistent and put together. And then my second little hindsight is 2020 note is that as much as I'm really happy with how it came out and I love it and I think my friend's gonna love it, I would make the gap between the ribbing and the face hole like three inches bigger. I think this is definitely one of those I kind of wanted to cut corners because I was feeling lazy moments. So I only did a few rounds, but if I were you or if I were me, cause I'm literally already starting a second one. I really loved this project so much. I'm just gonna make this gap like way bigger. But other than that, I really love how it came out. It looks so cute and it really looks store-bought like between I don't know if it's the yarn or just the knitting but this was so easy to make I am a beginner knitter and it really looks like something I could have bought for my friend but it was made by me so I really love this project if you make a balaclava please tag me um, I would love to see it I will be posting my next one on Instagram as well so you could follow me there if you enjoyed the video subscribe to the channel and other than that I'm gonna go but let me show you guys some final looks